As you can see with the background behind me, and you might still recognise it from the last vlog, um, we are at the British Horse Feeds Red Dragon ride. It's also the national championships. Um, I love the Red Dragon, it's one of my favourites. But it's not me that is going to be doing the majority of this vlog. I'm going to hand you over to my crew. Dan, mum and dad. Will, unfortunately, isn't here. He's taking his girlfriend to uni. She's doing a master's. And they're going to chat you through packing a crew car, what's there, take you through to the crew points and how they set up like a crew point and things like that. So, I'll hand you over. Good luck, guys. Good morning. Welcome to the crew car boot. A new car boot experience for us because we haven't crewed in this. I just to say that obviously you do not need a 4x4 to crew in. In fact, we've crewed in Edge Citroen C1 and frankly, it probably had a bigger boot than the Range Rover did. So it's kind of getting everything you need while you're crewing and anything your rider might want that you've forgotten about and she's forgotten about, but she'll want anyway. Plotting, planning, going on. We have a change of buckets with watery stuff in. We've gone from square to round. So this may be a little interesting on the neatness of the crew packing experience, including the kitchen sink. There's no kitchen sink here. <laughs> Really? I beg to differ. I beg to differ. Spares. Spare hoof boot. Rug. Oh, and yes. Kreiso, the dry goch. Very important first aid kit. Important crew food. However, I will guarantee that your rider who has claimed to have bought crew food won't actually have bought crew food that everybody can eat. I'm sorry, Mum. I completely forgot that you're trying to be more veggie than a meat eater. You can eat crisp bananas. That's true, I can eat crisp bananas. So we've got squash bottles there, we've got all the spare waters just in case. We have flame water. Hold up, water. wait a minute. We've got plenty of spare water just in case we go through it. It's pretty cold today though, so we're not going to go through it. All the spares, spares at the back there, so we've got spares for the Sugar beet water. And then, just in case we run out of electrolytes, we've got more there to put in. We've got feed in case he needs it. All the spares at the back. Rugs, rugs. More buckets. More buckets. We don't mind crewing other people, and actually, we'd rather crew somebody who is crewless and is finding things a bit stressful than not. But obviously, you want to be a bit careful because you don't want to share your buckets with horses you don't know. So we take a spare bucket with us so that ponies can have drinks. It won't look like this later. And even though we know where we put everything, I can guarantee that we won't be able to remember where something is. <laughs> <laughs> it will be everywhere. It'll be everywhere, I tell you. We are ready. But as crew, your responsibility is to have a good look at this section in the morning to make sure there's been no route changes or last minute crewing instructions. <laughs> Always a good idea to know your crew number, which is your rider's number, and you have to display it in your crewing vehicle prominently. All good to go? Very good. Oh, very good. Another important bit with crewing is assigning people jobs. So when it comes to it, when say when Beth finished her loop, everyone knows what they're doing and there's no confusion. Like so someone takes the saddle off, someone grabs the, the horse's head and leads them down. Someone's there with buckets of water and stuff. And also when we're driving round. So today Kate's going to be navigating, Carl's going to be driving. I'm going to be sat there eating food. Here's the crew 
pensively waiting for their horse, having selected a nice off-road position so the horse isn't bothered by passing traffic. Having prepared the plain water, the electrolyte water, the sugar beet water, the crew feed, the slosh bottles, and the bucket with water for any horse that doesn't have a crew. So have we been good crew? And have we remembered to have a mobile phone at the points? <sighs> so they've been riding now for 32 minutes, I do believe. -ish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. There we are. So you calculate the speed and distance so you've got a rough idea of the time that your horse will be at each crew point yes because one of crew's very important jobs especially when you get higher up and they're racing is sometimes your riders lose the plot and maybe riding too fast so you can then hoik them in to calm things down a bit because coming into crew points first does not always equals winning and don't fez up to the Sorry. fact we may have forgotten anything right, can we go to the water? Don't look like you're having fun. No look fun. stressed Absolutely at no all fun. times. No, no fun. You've told me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no fun, no ice cream. Don't tell him you got lost. Don't tell him you got lost. Break the bucket! I guess another top tip would be learning how your rider reacts on race day. So Beth, she becomes a snappy crocodile when it comes to race day. But as soon as, I mean, Mr Langley will probably snappy agree with this. Snappy crocodile is a very polite way of putting it. <laughs> All sort of a crocodile that hasn't been fed for 12 years. Yeah, but as soon as she gets through the final vetting, she oh, turns and light again. goes back to the normal Beth. Okay. So that's another one. Learn how she is on race day. Mm -hmm. well, that sums up the video from a current perspective. <laughs> Look how covered in sugar beet is. <laughs> this is to be expected, being with horses. But, uh, so hopefully that's given you a few tips and tricks on what to do with crewing wise, or whether you're going to go crew or convince family or friends to crew for you. Obviously the main goal is to get rider and horse round safely. So, cheers. <laughs>